platform for sustainable innovation. We're not talking about the environment. That's a very important thing to talk about. But here we're talking about how do you get innovation that you can keep doing at a rapid pace and stay at a rapid pace versus continually refactoring uh, each time that you want to do something new. So um, platform for sustainable in innovation. We got three, uh, three fun guests with us. First one I want to bring on is Greg Streetman. He's an integration lead with Eagle Technology Group, a systems integrator. He has more than three decades of experience with APIs, SOA, integration, single sign-on, including in high security environments like defense. So welcome, Greg. Why don't you say something interesting about, uh, about your company, your contact, something. Uh, thank you, Randy. With this being Native American Heritage Month, I'd like to highlight that Eagle TG is owned by the Modoc Nation. The Modoc Nation, unlike most shareholders, has made it clear that the value gained by doing the best job we can is more important than increased profits. This attitude of mission first, profit second, allows us to balance performance and profits so that we can more closely work with the other development teams to get the best integrated product. Go Native Americans, I love that. Uh, Sanjeev Nayak is founder and CEO of Exfusion Technologies and their Exaqua unified data platform combines data integration, sharing, analysis, enterprise data asset management with an end-to-end -end data pipeline automation. Sanjeev, say something interesting about y'all. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thanks, thanks, Randy and Greg. Um, yeah, Exfusion is, uh, this is a very interesting article for us and uh, when WSO to ask us to talk about that. Yes, we are leaving this for last several years and uh, creating sustainable platform that will promote innovation. And I'm here uh, to talk more about it. Um, and as, as Randy said, this is not about a specific, uh, you know, service or a solution. We are talking about a framework that will uh, promote innovation enterprise wide and sustain it. Great. Now I want to bring on uh, Damon Cody. He's a product manager for Identity at Elucian. They're a cloud-based solutions and services firm for higher education. And he has extensive experience in technical product management, software engineering, and focuses heavily on identity and access management, event-driven architecture. Hey, Damon, welcome. Say something interesting about where you are. Hey, Randy. Uh, thank you. And uh, it's an honor and pleasure to, to be on the stage virtually today with these uh, very incredible guests. Um, so, so one of the things I love about working for Elucian is that um, we, we get faced with some pretty incredible challenges. While, while there are so many similarities between colleges and universities, I can tell you that each and every one is very distinct and unique in their own right. And so the challenge for us is to build solutions and services that take advantage of the commonalities within higher ed, but also are extensible and flexible and adaptable enough to meet those very distinct and unique challenges that um, there's never a dull moment. And I really <laughs> love getting up every day working with incredible um, technology experts uh, to solve some pretty complicated problems. Cool, cool. So let's let's dive in. The first thing I want to address really gets at the notion of sustainable innovation. And because it's one thing to apply some technology, get an agile team, put something together real fast. Then you go to try to do something else. And it's like, well, wait a minute. Now we have to refactor 50 percent of it or or whatever. But, you know, it takes a different kind of thing to be able to do something fast and then build on it and go faster and faster with each change. So do you guys have an example, good organization, yourselves, a client, customer, you know, achieving a sustainable rate of innovation with technology and what made it possible? Well, I would say that my team is definitely an example. We've been achieving consistent innovation for the last seven years, which is how long we've been working with WSO2. I'd say the first key is good people. You need people who get excited by the challenges, but especially need people who understand who can understand the business needs and code to that business need. Secondly, you need good tools. DevOps is important. Automated testing is very important to keep that innovation going because if you miss a spot and go on, you've 
pretty much added in a new bug and or two new bugs to fix one. That doesn't work very well. And finally, either your platform tools need to be innovative or you need to be able to swiftly change tools. As I said, we've been working with WSO2 platform for the last seven years, and they have been very innovative. They keep up with all the latest and greatest. They also work exclusive, fairly much heavily with standards out there. So, and that's important to us. By keeping with standards, we know we can easily migrate to something else if WSO2 were to stop being innovative, which we don't expect. But that's always been part of our planning, to be prepared for whatever comes down the road next. Yeah, and, and, uh, yeah, yeah. And, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. So uh, thanks, thanks, Greg. Yeah, I, I'd like to bring you know a couple of things that I have seen in my engagements with my customers, uh, in particular in government sector, what we have noticed that, um, and also in the commercial sector, what is important to innovate, and 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 democratizing that idea uh, across the enterprise is very critical. IT is innovating on IT skills. The business is trying to thrive something else, and there has to be a marriage. And there has to be an alignment because if a business delivery is excellence is very critical for me, I would excel in that. I would try to innovate in that, not on infrastructure or or any any other areas. So democratizing that knowledge across the enterprise so that they are all aligned on a common goal, that is what is what is very very critical. And also, many cases, you know, what is important to run my business? How I have the fixed part of money how I can maximize that investment, creating the business value that, that makes me different, makes me standing out differently than others, right? So how I maximize my investment uh, on business value creation, right? And that will excel, that will make me different, that will make me standing out of the crowd. And important thing also, establishing a framework using user-centric approach. We are in the periphery of business and technology, and we are trying to innovate. And what is that my user, my customers want? What is that my users want? And taking that approach, um, that is very critical. And uh, the fourth thing, what is what is very critical here is also is how we democratize the knowledge about business and data. Many often we have seen large organizations. There are very, very few IT and business means. They understand data, they understand technology. And that creates a critical dependencies on those few uh, people within that entire organization and causes humongous amount of risk and hidden cost um, for those. So what we at Expuse and we are trying to do is there the, these are the four strategic uh, foundational elements that we try to promote in every of, of our engagement with our customers. That okay. how we can sustain your innovation with that. Damon, what, yeah, yeah. what, what are you going to put in there? Yeah, yeah, I'd like to say I, I totally agree with Greg and, and Sajib that this is something that's not easy to do, right? It really requires that that we begin to change the way we think, the way we work, and the technology that we use and how we use it. So something that's really important to us, you know, at Elucian and something that we're definitely dedicated to. And what we've done in this this in this regard is we've completely exposed all of our business, you know, functionality through REST, you know, APIs. And so really what that does is it gives our clients, you know, a, a business centric, you know, approach to design patterns using our business process APIs. Uh, we have domain, you know, based APIs as well that are within our ethos integration platform. And it, it really um, allows our clients to, you know, use a tool set that enables them to, you know, continuously inter, uh, innovate based on um, a framework that allows for that type of uh, innovation. Cool, cool. So, so Chief, I want to pick up on something you, you you said. You We've easily fall into this. I don't want to pick on you, but just a phrase I want to bring out because it's so easy to, to, to do this, you, you you use the word alignment with business and IT, mm -hmm. and I and I, I think we're past the point of alignment. It's you know, use your company name. We need a fusion. I mean, you know, I made a comment in the main uh, in the main session a while ago that really every business is a software business, and it, it's not really it's not two things. It's one thing. It's a digital right. business that has to be designed together. Um, so how does that change how you design software, how you think about software when when that's the reality of it? Right. So um, 
one one critical thing that we have noticed um, is the expectation mismatch between business and technology. Yes, I agree with you. It's a fusion of business and technology is the enabler, um, the solution or, or, or enabler for that business services, right? And they have to be married. They have to be aligned. But what we have noticed is that there is a constant mismatch in the uh, in the expectation of the business and IT. IT thinks they are delivering what they are supposed to deliver. Business thinks they are not getting what they are supposed to get. So my point here is when I say fusion or taking a top-down approach is start with business. And if you remember the biggest mistake that happened when service-oriented architecture came in the market, everybody misunderstood what is service-oriented architecture. IT started, it all started as an IT initiative. All the legacy application components were exposed as APIs or uh, you know web services. IT thought that they made the components interoperable, but they couldn't fit that square peg in a round hole where the business wanted to deliver. Trillions of dollars was wasted in the industry. But if it comes from the top down, like what is my service? What is that I'm delivering? What is the domain that I'm delivering? And use that as a semantic framework to establish interoperability is what is what I'm trying to say is very, very critical to, to do continuous innovation on that. Otherwise, yeah. I too will build something. The chef is cooking something. The guest is not liking it. So yeah. That, yeah. That, the marriage has to be there, right? Yeah, you said domain. Dom uh, uh, David said domain. I mean, important stuff. Right. Yeah, yeah. You know, one thing to add to, to, to that, I think, is, you know, we have to be keen, keenly focused on our customers, right? And, and exactly. understanding their needs, right? To ensure that we are building solutions and services that map to tangible, you know, needs uh, at the customer level. And so if you, if I put that in the context of higher education, right? We know that our customers need an integrated ecosystem to, to survive um, in this particular landscape, right? And so that means we need um, an integrated architecture that not only integrates the Aleutian ecosystem, but also includes that of our partners. And to that extent, you know, we're, we're leveraging a, a framework of, of you know, business-centric APIs, domain-driven APIs, you know, standards in, in the way of how we grant access to these integration, you know, <laughs> artifacts through, you know, identity and uh, our partnership as well with WSO2 and our offering of Ethos Identity, which is the gateway to these services that are, you know, un unavailing such critical capabilities. Let's, let's talk about integration itself. I mean, because integration often takes the blame for slowing down innovation. You know, it's like, well, we got these five systems that do what we want, but we got to put them together and that seems to take forever. And and APIs are supposed to help, but I've seen APIs be just as tactical and point to point as integration kinds of stuff. So how, how do you think about integration architecture, strategy? How, how do those need to change and how have they changed to, to, to support and foster sustainable innovation? Anybody, Greg? Well, integration is always a challenge and always will be a challenge. But it's even more so, I think, now that with cloud native microservice oriented development, because everything's spread out. And with COVID, now we're all over the place. So oftentimes, even your teams are distributed. So coordination and communication are vital. You've got to get that API down first. Uh, make sure that everybody knows what that contract is. Get it designed well, but as quickly as possible. Then when it must change, because everybody knows you don't get everything perfect the first time, communication of those changes is vital. Making sure that everybody knows the changes that are out there and can work to those changes and are, are working to those changes. Uh, testing, make sure you test often and integrate as early and often as possible. The sooner you can test with everything integrated together, the more time you have to identify and fix those misrepresentations that may have come across. I like what you said there. I, I often pick up on that. You know, where it's funny, it, 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 funny. It's, you know, it's one of those, you, you know, tongue in cheek kind of funny where you know, I see it at, at a client, you know, they'll have customer API and customer API version two. Well, okay. What's wrong with that picture? They didn't realize when they did the first one that they wouldn't get it right. And they had to go on to version two, but that, Damon, Sanjeev, what you guys got? 
Uh, I mean, I, I, I would, I would like to start with where Greg ended, and and you know, I like the way he said that. Uh, to me, integration is not an option anymore. Um, it's a requirement. So deal with it. Uh, with uh, multi-cloud uh, infrastructure, uh, SaaS services, globalization, global service delivery, business services delivery, you you got to live with that, whether you like it or not. It's not a matter of slowing down or uh, or making it you know faster. You have so so. What is important to understand here is how we reduce that slowness, right? How we handle it, how we create that foundation and infrastructure that will allow me to plug in uh, the integration like Lego blocks. Imagine that way. So if I got to innovate um, in my organization and I want to do a quick delivery, right, of, of everything there, then I need to establish a foundation that we measure on based on five parameters. What is called time, cost, quality, trust, and risk. So how quickly the time is time to delivery, how quickly you can deliver, the cost of the delivery, the quality of the outcome, the trust that you know, my business can believe on my outcome, and the risk of security, risk of integration, risk of delay, risk of everything, right? So if I am establishing a foundation where I can use that like a Lego block to uh, with, with those and then measure the, the outcome of that initiative with those five parameters, that will help my organization who keep on sustaining so that I'm not reinventing the wheel all the time. And we did that with WSO2, um, with WSO2 API manager and identity manager. We laid out a foundation for one of the California state government department that managed $3 billion of student aid fund. Uh, and we modernized that system and we laid out that foundation. Now it's doing across the state integration like Lego blocks. Yeah, because yeah, right. their foundation capabilities are all established. All they need yeah. to do just plug into uh, plug in connect to my customers what I want to do yeah yeah I agree with you know what Greg and and Shajib, you know had, you know, mentioned so far as well but I think it, it, we also need to look at th there's a tool set <clears throat> that that we need in that sense and APIs definitely help right yes but, but APIs are just one part of, of a well-founded integration mm -hmm. architecture right we we, yes. we need organizations that have you know, a broad spectrum of integration developers, not just well versed in APIs, but in data transfer and transformation. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, then the API integration as well and business process automation. And I couldn't agree more with what was said as we move more towards the cloud <clears throat> and adopt a, a more microservices based architecture. Um, we need a governance framework framework for integration that gives us things like Persona-based um, experiences mm -hmm. for the operation, you know, staff, the tech team, and your business team. You, you need visibility and analytics, so, so so that we have reports and dashboards that give us clear insight into the health and metrics of our environment. And, and finally, tools that allow us to, you know, automate controls so it's such that we can, you know get alerts and notifications when things aren't right and respond in a much faster way. So we, we, we need an, an integrated approach to this. Yes. Okay. Course. So Dam Damon said the dirty word. Da Damon said governance. <laughs> <laughs> like nobody likes governance. It makes it, it makes the, it, it brings the old ivory tower to, into your to mind, the old enterprise architecture teams that said thou shalt from on high and didn't necessarily know. But I, I, I think enterprise architecture teams are doing a lot better now. But, but why is governance necessary and how can we do it without slowing down innovation? Uh, Governance, um, it's a little dirty, but again, I said, you've got to live with that because without that, you start somewhere today and very soon, it's basically you are doing something without any control perimeter or with the lack of process policies and stuff that are uh, that need to regulate the deliverable, the quality of it, the, the trust, the time that, that comes, right? So very soon, you will realize that, oh, I got few legacy web services that they call, they used to call it, Gartner used to call it legacy web services in the SO world, right? So it is important. 
it it slows down but there are there are tools and processes that can be automated and um, with with we in 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 today's world there are services that are available i want to do my security checks static analysis i want to do code quality i want to do the code coverage i don't do it manually however there are few <clears throat> elements that need human touch for example anything that i am doing how i ensure it's aligned to my business goals and objective which i again and again and again i emphasize because i have seen the failures of tens of hundreds of million dollar project in front of my eyes because this was not there just technology started it and it failed completely and um, <clears throat> and then the second thing is all the user interaction services right the user persona demon you mentioned earlier right yeah I, my addressing their their pain points their needs their um, the opportunities that are presented through the transformation right so am i addressing those things so those questions need to be addressed at the same time all the specific api specifications you need to have a common model the log enterprise logical data model um, that need to be aligned to that i cannot create my structure those are very very important to ensure semantic interoperability certain oh, things can be automated yeah. certain things cannot be automated so human oh. touch is inevitable but you know you you still have tons of tools uh, that right. you can automate yeah, and you have to use the tools you have to use the human touch but uh, first thing i'd like to say from your original mm -hmm. question associating governance with the ivory tower i think that's a mistake and that's we make governance a bad word uh, as I said before, we're de development is spread out over more teams, uh, oftentimes distributed teams. So governance or management of those systems and managing of you know the development, but also managing of all the data and things that go with it is more important, not less. Keeping those distributed teams in sync, keeping them doing using the same tools, the same data, uh, calling the same things, the same information is critical to successful integration over time. Uh, if you do it right, these things can actually increase the overall development's velocity instead of reducing it. Yeah. Right, and, and I agree, you know, take an approach to governance that, um, you know, doesn't, you know, introduce unnecessary bureaucracy is the right approach and embracing the idea of governance because it can automate things you know, you know, um, standard-based documentation creation for APIs using Swagger, and your, your as as Sajid mentioned, your scans and your, your um, performance, you know, uh, test and you know, code coverage, all things that we can automate and still maintain that human level of interaction on, you know, UX and reviews based on the agile, you know, methodology and things of that nature. But it's we should embrace it because accountability is important, right? We need to yes. be accountable to our customers. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, you know, I sort of think of it, you know, back to this notion that that your software is your business and your business is your software. You know, it's like who who would just sort of say, well, yeah, everybody just design your own piece of business however you want, you know, and and we'll see if it fits together. No, there's you, you have to bound it somehow. But but inside those boundaries, maybe there's freedom, but you have to understand where and how to bound things and connect them together, which is where the domain word comes back into the picture of business capabilities and and domains and the like and and, and greg the thing i think about with you know, as you're saying uh, you know governance shouldn't be a dirty word i mean it often is but but I, I i like the analogy of a formula one pit stop you know which i am amazed to see these little videos where the car comes in and out in two seconds or less four new tires you know you know, you know, one or two other things done with it. And the reason it can be done is because of discipline, deep training, automation, and and look into it if you guys are are, are curious about it. I love that that kind of uh, that, that kind of thing, that kind of perspective. All right, so um, <coughs> let's go go around. There's one other thing that I want to that I want to just throw just a, a couple of quick sentences out, and that is the notion that along with with governance, another sort of thing that makes that needed is because it, integration used to be the separate thing from app dev and now i see a blurring line between the two i'm wondering how you guys see that coming up where 
you, there's one thing you could do it with either or, um, or you can't do one thing without the other between app dev and integration. Yeah, sort of real quickly, what do you guys see in that? Uh, convergence, really quick convergence. I mean, in today's world of, of you know, moving to the cloud in microservices, you know, development architecture <laughs> approaches, you have to have, you know, integration embedded into the de development process because you can't develop, you know, a cloud-based application in today's context without integrating with a log server, for example. So it has to be embedded. And when that happens over time, it really becomes infused into the application development process and you're just much better off for that going forward. Right. And, cool. and if you see today, you know, um, the applications are not anymore monoliths. They are more, I would say composites. So when you get composites, these are all Lego yeah. blocks. Again, I'm coming to that. My user inter interaction service or my data services or my security services, each of those, are each individual services that I compose and create an application. So it's more composition than all. So in that case, I would rather, instead of saying application development and integration developer, I would say service developer. This is my interaction service developer. This is my secret who specialize on specific type of services. They understand the semantics. They understand the technology of implementing that. So cool. Yes, definitely okay. a blurring of the lines. You see a lot more things moving towards uh, developers doing the integration, the integrators doing development. Uh, everybody has to work together. Teams are smaller, so you don't have that uh, separation. Everybody has to spread their skills and get uh, more skills and more capabilities that they can bring to the table to be good players in any team right now. All the all the more reason to uh, to to get the right kind of adaptive governance. So you put the right kind of governance in the right place. Okay, so uh, lightning round here. Last comments for our, our audience, Greg. Uh, yes, I just want to say that innovation is definitely possible, but it takes planning, it takes governance, it takes management. Uh, and it also takes good people and good tools. And WSO2 has been a great tool for us to work with over the years. Cool. So, Gene? Um, uh, of course, you know, innovation does, it's a journey, right? So you start small, you grow big. But where you start, I mean, at Expusion, uh, we are a consultancy. Uh, as At the same time, we, we are a product company. And our product key principle that we use for our innovation, we call it Lizard. It's called Leverage, Integrate simplify and automate. So leverage existing powers, don't try to reinvent the wheels, like pick up WSO2, pick up identity manager, integrate them together, Apache Spark, or build your foundation, integrate them together to connect the dots to build a solution, simplify it to empower more business savvy users, to, to empower them for self-service, and automate for low code, no code, rapid delivery. Right. Cool. So those are the Lisa principles that we follow in our organization. And I suggest that it works very well. And if we you cannot go wrong with that. Great. Damon, what you got for the folks today? Yeah, On your I, way I would say one of the things that really excites me about, you know, as a community within higher education, as we collectively evolve to that point where we can, you know, rapidly, you know, um, create sustainable you know, innovations is that we're going to be able to tackle even more challenges and what that's going to lead to is just a greater amount of student success cool so i'll close out by saying there's actually a trick in the title the title says platform i see you actually need two platforms for sustainable innovation you need the technology base we've talked a lot about that and integration is a critical part of that api is a critical part of that multiple kinds of integration but it's what you build with those, the business software, the, the business API built around domain design. That's your business platform. And that really is the critical platform for sustainable innovation. So thank you, appreciate it, gentlemen. And, uh, and it's been a lot of fun.